In this video, we are going to learn about conducting beam and column analysis. You can easily solve a problem like this by applying conditions of static equilibrium. You can find out distribution of shear force and bending moment across this beam. You can find out its support reactions by analytical calculations, hand calculations, but sometimes when problems get too complex, you are to take into account the simulation techniques as well. You can use the simulation techniques to visualize different parameters, different types of loading, different types of supports as well. So there are two different types of simulations. Firstly, in this video especially, we are going to only work on the beam or column analysis. To do beam or column analysis, start inventor. Ensure your units are in millimeters and ISO. Press cancel. Click on assembly. Click on design. Open further options in frame and click on beam or column calculator. Save the assembly first. You can save it and you can name the file as beam analysis or beam calculator. The next step is to specify the length of the beam. In this case, the length is specified to me as 11 meters. Uh, so um, I will specify the length in this as well. So this should be 11 meters. Once you have specified the length, the next step is to specify the section. Click on section, open further option, select rectangle, and you can check the section size. Now in this case the capital letters are specifying the outside section for this rectangular tube, uh, out, outside dimensions for the outer dimensions for this rectangular tube, the lowercase letter are representing the inner dimensions of this rectangular tube. Specify as 0 and 0 for the inner dimensions because we want it to be a, a rectangle a square tube square bar okay and it can be 40 by 40 millimeter as as well so the dimensions of outer and outer dimensions are not of concern while you're calculating the beam in this case and the support reactions and shear force in this case the next step is to uh, specify the beam calculations how you want it to be uh, you should just uncheck the density. You're not taking into account density for the time being. If you're verifying your answers by analytical calculation, then double click on radial force, specify the distance from the middle of section. So radial force means uh, this is the um, transverse loading in the vertical direction. You have axial loading as well. You have uniformly distributing load and you have bending moments clockwise and anti-clockwise and torque. And uh, for the time being, if we look at our scenario, we have got two forces. Your forces could be different than this, but uh, you can apply the forces according to your own requirements. For example, I have taken this as an example of 25 and 10 Newtons. So this is just an example uh, to simulate for the time being. So this loading is 25 milli uh, Newtons. And from the middle of the section, I need to calculate how much it is on the left hand side so the l1 is 3.5 meters on the left hand side from the middle so i will go back to the inventor double click on the radial force specify if you enter positive 3.5 what will happen it will specify the from the middle it will specify the force on this side but you want to go on the left hand side in order to go on the left hand side, you specify a negative number, for example, minus 3.5 meters. So that will be the um, distance from the middle of section. Specify the loading, which is 25 newtons. In my case, it could be different in yours. 25 and press OK. Specify another force, radial force distance from beginning of section. So what is the distance from beginning of section for this force? It is seven meters for this 10 Newton's force. Beginning is always from the left hand side. So from left to this L2 is 
distance is 7 meters and the amount of force, magnitude of the force is 10 newtons. So I will specify the units 7 meters and 10 newtons. Press OK. And ensure the number of beam divisions are 1000. 1000 divisions. Press calculate and go to beam graphs to validate whether everything has been done correctly. And you will be able to view the reaction forces straight away 24.09 and 10.90. You can double check whether your forces have been applied correctly at the specified distances. So this is two meters from the start and this is seven meters from the start, which is correct. To view the shear force distribution, click on shear force and then that's YZ plane, this will show you the correct shear force distribution, which you can uh, confirm via analytical calculations as well. You can draw this shear force diagram and you will be able to view the shear force distribution. You can also view the bending moment distribution by just clicking on bending moment YZ plane, and this will show you the amount of maximum bending moment in the beam, the location of maximum bending moment, and the distribution of bending moment across the beam. You can hover on this line to view the amount of bending moment at any point across this beam. And uh, in the case of shear force, you need to remember where shear force goes, changes direction. For example, from positive side, it goes to the negative side. This is where the maximum bending moment will be all the time. This is what you need. You can confirm with analytical calculations as well. We can also view the required results on this side for support reactions and different types of loading. And you can view the shear force and bending moment distribution on this side of your results bar. So that's how you will conduct a beam or column analysis of using beam or column calculator.